everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Emily from Emily Crumble Designs and I design colorful and heavy bookish merch for readers. Today is really just gonna be you and I hanging out here in the studio one-on-one. -on -one. I am currently on my holiday break, so we don't have any orders to pack and it's just been so nice to just relax, honestly. Yesterday morning, I just got up and instead of having to go into work, I just spent the morning at Barnes & Noble, just lost them in the stacks of the romance books, of the fantasy books. I came out with over like $200 worth of romance books, fantasy books, and all these like wedding magazines. So it, it was a good morning. I'm, I'm very much so enjoying being on my break. <laughs> But today's video is really kind of going to double as a recap video of how 2023 went for my small business and, and my goals and visions for 2024. So we have a lot to get through with this video. So I hope you guys enjoy this. It's just going to be a chill, laid back video. So get some cozy pajamas on, get a blankie, and then let's hang out. So the first things first is we're just gonna go over the 2023 recap first. And the first thing that we're gonna go over first is what my best selling products were for all of 2023. And this is based off of you guys. So this is not me like picking like, what are like my favorite products of 2023? It's me going into my Shopify stats, seeing what were the most bought items in the entire range of products in my whole shop. So first up is my monthly bookmark club. And this is not specific to a certain month. This is just overall, this was the most bought item in my shop. And I'm not surprised by that really because when I do my monthly bookmark clubs, every month I usually sell, usually it's between like 290 to like 360 sets per month. So I'm not surprised that that's the top one. But I will say I actually think the most popular ones this year were actually January, so like way back, which was, I think that was the Puppy Love one. And then I think the next popular one was the Botanical Bookshop one. It was like a lot of plant stuff and then it was the bookshop bookmark where it was like very botanical and it had a greenhouse on the top. Those were the top two, but yeah, overall, Monthly bookmark clubs were the top sellers. I will say that, <laughs> funny enough, all five best-selling products were bookmarks because I set, had it set to all products showing, but it ended up being that all bookmarks were the top five products. So you guys really like my bookmark. So coming in as spot number two is the Cozy Fall Day bookmark set, which Again, I'm not surprised by that one because when I did my fall launch, the amount of bookmarks I shipped from that set was wild. I've never sold that many bookmarks from a bookmark set for any launch I've ever done. The fall launch really was like madness in the best way possible because I have not made that much on a single launch day in ever, like ever in my business. I mean, it's gone up since then, like for the holiday launch and then for Halloween launch and then Black Friday, but the fall launch really was like, the turning point in my business where I was like, wow, things are really like starting to amp up here. And it was amazing. So I'm so happy you guys liked that set so much because that is one of my favorites as well. And the third most popular product in my shop is actually one that I, that's wild. Whoa. Okay. So is actually the Sweet Sugar Plum bookmark set. And I say that's wild because those have only been in my shop since early November. That is wild. So that one bookmark set literally beat out almost all other products that have been in my shop the whole year. And that's how many we've sold in, I think we've sold like 390 sets or something like that. I think the Cozy Fall bookmark set, it was like 450 or 60, something like that set sold. That's wild. Okay, I'm glad you guys like that too. Okay, and I will just give you a little hint that the next two products are also bookmark sets. So the fourth most popular product in my shop this year was my St. Patrick's Day bookmark set, which makes me really happy because back when I drew those, which feels like ages ago now, it was like a really big deal because I kept explaining to people that I don't like the color green. As you can tell by my studio, by my artwork, I don't use green a lot. And I just, I don't, I don't like green. I just, I don't know why, I'm just not a green person. And and a lot of people kept asking me like, can you do St. Patrick's Day bookmarks? And I was like, okay. And I like kind of put it off for a while because I just didn't want to use the color green. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? I'm like, we're gonna Emilyify this and we're gonna make it really colorful. We're gonna make it pop. And seems like everybody ended up liking it because it was the fourth most popular product in my shop this year. <laughs> and then coming in with spot number five is the fifth most popular product in my shop this year was the Be Mine Valentine bookmark set. So that was 
back in January that I listed those. I had so much fun designing that. I've actually been thinking going into 2024 is I'm trying to decide do I want to do another Valentine bookmark set or do I want to do a romance bookmark set? Because I currently have a romance bookmark set that I did probably three years ago now that I did it and I'm feeling like it's time for an upgrade. So I'm thinking of maybe taking some of the phrases I used for that bookmark set and just making like a whole new bookmark set around romance books. And I was like, it'd be the perfect time because Valentine's Day, it's the season of love. So maybe I'll do that. Okay, so those were my best selling products of 2023. So let's take some time to now go over my worst selling products of 2023. <laughs> because every, every business has this. You have products that do really, really well. Then you have products that are like, no, didn't do so well. And I have those too. So I didn't do like specific products that didn't do well. I more so did product categories that didn't do well for this. So my four worst selling products of this year was one, the reusable sticker book. And I've, that one surprised me because I've had so many people ask me like, can you do a reusable sticker book? And I did it and it was kind of like semi crickets. It was like some people bought it, but then it was just like kind of like fell flat. And I was like, okay, why did everybody ask me to do this? So that fell flat. So I'm not going to be doing reusable sticker books again, but I did end up eventually selling out of all of them, which was good for a while. Like most of this year, I just had extra stock just stacked in the studio. But um, yeah, those didn't do well. Another product that didn't do well that actually carried over from the year before were my paint by number kits. That was another product that it's funny like it seems like some of the products I get asked to do by a lot of people when I eventually do it, people don't get them, which doesn't make sense, but that happens, so that's all right. So I did eventually sell out of them, which is good, but again, I'm not going to be doing that again. But um, yeah, paint by number kits did not do well. Another one that didn't do well were my gift bags, and again, I already have a feeling that they didn't do well because of the price point for what they were, but I had to price them at that. I mean, even with what they were priced and me listing them on Black Friday and the discount people got, I made no money off of them at what they were priced with how much I had to pay for them. So that was a bust, but I have extras. That's why I, I keep looking over this way. I'm looking at the gift bag. I'm just like, <laughs> but I have extra gift bags. So I'm just gonna keep them in my shop until they sell out maybe this year, if people wanna start stocking up early for next Christmas. And then the final product category that did not do well was magnets. And again, that doesn't really surprise me because again, that's another product. I mean, I've had magnets for a few years now and they've never really sold well, but I keep having people asking me like, can you make more magnets? Can you do more magnets? And I've never, I've been really hesitant to do that because I know when I do them, they just don't sell. Like I'll sell some here and there, but it's nothing like bookmarks or stickers where, or notepads where it's like every single day. So I've actually decided that is a goal, not a goal, but that is something I'm gonna be doing new in my shop in 2024 is I'm discontinuing all of my magnets. So I won't have magnets anymore. I'm probably just gonna put all the extras in like mystery grab bags for like a, instead of a spring clean out, like a winter clean out mystery grab bag sale because I, have a ton in the mystery grab bag bin waiting to be packed so we're not gonna have magnets anymore <laughs> and then so next up i'm going to talk about my biggest achievement for 2023 and although we had like a lot of great moments in my business in 2023 i think what i want to highlight as my biggest achievement for the year was building this studio and like no i didn't build it myself but having worked out of my like like a partial part of my living room for the past 11 years for my business and finally saving up the money to build a brand new studio like all on my own because like I didn't have my mom give me money or my dad give me money or a family member give me money to help build this studio I paid for every single thing myself I paid the contractor myself I paid for the electrician myself paid for the Wi-Fi paid for every single thing you see in this studio like organizers products i paid for everything and that was a really proud moment for me that i had worked so so hard over the past 11 years trying to build my business from literally just a thought in my head that i had an idea that i wanted to do this the fact that i could save up 
that much money to build my dream studio was the most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my life. It was the best. I remember it because it took a few months for them to build this and when I came down and finally saw the finished room, I just cried. I was like, I sat in the middle of this room. It was completely empty and I just cried and it was and I like pat myself on the back, I'm getting teary. I pat myself on the back and I was like, we made it. And it was just, it was a complete full circle moment because when I was a little girl, my mom and I, after my dad and my mom divorced, we couldn't stay in the house we were living in. So we had to move to a smaller sized house just for the two of us. And we moved into this new house. And one of my favorite things about it was that it had this beautiful finished basement. I had never lived in a house that had a finished basement before. And I just remember we walked down and it had kind of like a this big window area. Well sliding doors where you could like go outside and then you could walk down to get to the driveway and I was nine years old and nine years old okay keep that in mind and my mom and I were standing there and I, I've always remembered this I looked at my mom and I was like mom I was like can I turn this basement into my store to sell all my products that I make because <laughs> like when I was that age I would make my own handmade bookmarks I would make notepads by like taking a glue stick and cutting out paper, drawing on each individual sheet of paper and gluing it together. I would make address books. I would write my own children's stories and illustrate them. And I would make like um, little fundraiser sheets and like try to go around the neighborhood trying to sell it to people. And at nine years old, I wanted to have my basement be like a store or an office space. And so finally, at age 28, be able to do that for myself, it was, it was a full circle moment. And it was, that was the highlight of my year this year. It feels like I've been in this studio for ages, but it's really only been like eight months. And it's, it's my favorite thing. I just, um, yeah, that was the best part of 2023 for me was just getting my dream studio built. Okay, so moving on forward, next thing I wanna talk about is some of the stats that I have for my shop for 2023. So I'm gonna say what the stat is, and then if you guys wanna guess in the comments before I say what it is, let me know. Let's see if you can guess any of it. So first stat is the total number of Etsy orders that I shipped. Now keep in mind, I don't promote my Etsy shop. I always promote my Shopify store. So Etsy orders are really only orders that I get from people on Etsy that like stumble upon my shop in search results. So I'm not putting like marketing efforts into Etsy besides I think like, I think I pay for like the ad Etsy ads, but besides that, I, I don't do anything. So do you have any guesses? Okay, so. The total number of Etsy orders that I shipped in 2023 was 3,735. Did anybody guess that right? <laughs> okay, and so the next one is the total number of Shopify orders that I shipped in all of 2023. Any guesses? 11,420. And that's just from a few days ago. I had a few more orders since yesterday, so that's probably a few more than that. 11,420 orders. No wonder I'm tired all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a lot. That's crazy in the best way possible. Okay, next stat is the total number of wholesale orders that I shipped. Now wholesale orders, that is just orders that I ship to physical retail stores or uh, like bookish subscription boxes that buy for me. But do you have any guesses? 334. That is a lot of stores that my products are in. Holy moly. You know what would be neat if I just like go through and I want to like make a map or like get a map and put like little like, what are they called? What are the colorful pin? What are the pin dots you put on a cardboard board? What are like the little pokey things that you put on? What is it called? Like the, you know, like it's got the, like a thumbtack. Thumbtack. Okay. I couldn't think of it. A thumbtack and put like little thumbtack pins on every like city where my products are in. That would be cool. That could be a cool decor piece for my studio too. I'll have to do that next year. <laughs> okay. Now this is the big one. Okay. How many bookmarks do you think that I shipped in 2023? So this is including monthly bookmark clubs, and this is including Shopify orders for since the very beginning of the year. And it's also, Shopify, I was able to get an exact amount. 
Etsy, I had to do a guesstimate, as well as wholesale orders, I had to do a guesstimate. So it very well could have been more. So I'm probably a bit under of what the actual number is, but I want to see if anybody can guess this. Any guesses? 47,000 plus bookmarks. Four, seven, comma, zero, zero, zero. Never in my life did I think that I would go to art school for four years and that my full-time job would be shipping bookmarks for a living. Never, ever, ever, but it is the best job in the world. I love it so much, and I'm so happy that everybody loves my bookmarks so much. That is just, I, I, I was, I literally, I went in my Shopify stats last night, and I sat there, and I went through pages and pages of stats, and I counted up every single bookmark quantity that was shipped. And I got the total number, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? It was wild. But, um, yeah, that's how many bookmarks we shipped all of this year. It's absolutely wild okay so the next thing that I want to talk about were the hardest lessons that I had to learn this year because no matter I feel like no matter how long you've owned your business for or you've been in business you always have lessons to learn like you are always learning and growing and evolving and I feel like you're never done learning like in any aspects of life really but a business especially and I had some hard lessons to learn this year and I would have to say that one of the biggest lessons that I had to learn was that I found, and I had, I've heard people say this, I've heard marketing gurus say this, I've heard so many people say this, and I experienced it firsthand this year. I experienced it before this year, but this year was when I think it got the most brutal, was that the larger your business grows, the more hate you're gonna receive. And I felt that full force this year, and this was a very hard year for me with that. And I know I've talked about it a bit with you guys on here, and I've mentioned it, but it's something kind of like where you feel like you can't talk about it much, because at least especially I do, like I've mentioned it a little bit, but when you're a business that is trying to spread positivity and happiness to others, you don't really wanna share the dark and hard stuff that is going on behind the scenes and the messages that you're receiving because you don't want to bring other people down and i was struggling with that this year and i sometimes just had a hard time posting because it was so hard for me to act happy when i was not happy and when i'm running a business that is based solely around the fact of making people happy what good does it do people if the person designing everything isn't happy herself <laughs> and i I mean, don't get me wrong, like, yes, like, you receive more hate as your business grows, but you also receive, like, 90 times more love than you do hate, but it's just the negative voices get louder the more your business grows, because this, I mean, I grew to, like, 45,000 followers on Instagram this year, which is wild, and I have always experienced Instagram as being, like, my safe space and just full of positive people and kindness and that was always been my favorite and I received so much love on there and I just I loved it and it was always really TikTok that I experienced just negativity and downright some awful mean people and it was this year that it was the first time that I ever experienced mean people on Instagram and that was hard for me because it kind of like shattered that safe bubble that I felt I had built on there for myself and it was very kind of eye-opening and hard because I felt like now I just had all these negative eyes on me when I would post and I would have a hard time posting because I didn't want to constantly get messages or comments of people just being downright awful and I mean people choose as you get grow they really choose to be negative about anything I would have people be negative about they didn't like the type of content I was posting that it was boring that it wasn't interesting or that my like when I would share orders that were like oh pack a whatever x dollar amount of order with me I'd have some people like laugh at how much it was and be like I wouldn't pay a penny for any of your artwork and just make you feel awful and worthless really and like it would make you kind of or me it made me second guess like am I should I be doing art am I not good at art if people are thinking this negatively about me and but the comments that were the hardest this year as you guys know if you've been here a while and you've seen my videos about this were the constant comments about my teeth <laughs> which i don't think there's anything seriously wrong with them um 
but basically people would just be um, rude and they would either comment on my posts or they would send me literally direct messages making fun of my teeth and how my appearance is. That was hard to deal with and it was, um, I would like, I've had, I had that on TikTok a little bit of people just being like, oh, look how disgusting she is. Or like those teeth, you just look so ugly. Um, but then I had never had it on Instagram really until this year. And that was hard again, because I always viewed that as like my safe space. And I'd have people just comment on my videos, like, oh, them teeth though, gross. And um, people, like, I think you remember in my other video mentioning someone being like, you do know it's okay to take time to go get dental care done, right? And she's like, you are the face of your brand after all. And there's comments that would just really hurt my self-esteem. And I just kept getting them and getting them and getting them. And I got to a point where I just had enough. And um, I had posted to my stories. I had tried never, this was the first time I, I ever shared publicly what I was going through. I had shared it with my reps when I would get the comments because it was just hard to deal with it on my own but it was the first time publicly that I had ever addressed it and I received so many like wonderful, wonderful comments and messages and so many just heartfelt long paragraph messages from people on Instagram just showing their support, being so sweet and kind and lifting me up and it brought back that safe space feeling for me again which was amazing and then it's just funny how it kind of takes that one comment to just throw you off and um, I got a comment from a woman who I actually ended up having to block because anything I posted she would message me just kind of being very negative and would comment on my videos being very negative and I had enough of it and I didn't want to deal with it anymore and she she messaged me saying well it's free speech that it's okay for people to make fun of me because it's free speech and I'm like I don't think that's how this works like free speech does not give you the right to be awful and cruel to someone and tear them down with the intent of being mean. Like that's not what it's about. And it, um, I just blocked the person after that because I'm like, I'm not dealing with this. But then the comments this year really bothered me so much so that I made an appointment to go see my dentist and I, I like was in tears when I was telling them about how I was just being made fun of all the time online and I'm like, can you do anything? And um, unfortunately they can't. So, but they did confirm that my teeth look darker because of my Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So they confirmed that my teeth are actually 100% healthy, 100% clean, and they said they can tell that I take impeccable care of them. I had no cavities, I had nothing at all. And it was very reassuring to hear that. She's like, it's crazy people are making fun of you because your teeth are so clean. I'm like, I literally take such good care of them, but she just confirmed that they are dark because the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome that I have makes the um, your teeth enamel basically be non-existent. So she said I have like very minimal teeth enamel left and um, it's not something you can reverse or fix. So I've been trying a teeth whitening thing they recommended. She's like, don't get your hopes up, it's not might not work and it's not working. But you know what, that's fine, just as long as I know my teeth are healthy, that's fine by me. If they're darker, I don't see what the big deal is because cause they're not that bad, okay? They're not that bad. So at this point, it's just I'm putting a blind eye to those comments and it's just the leader block going into next year. I'm not going to deal with it. But yeah, they said the only way that I would be able to make them whiter is to put crowns on. And I don't want to do that yet. And they're, they're like, your teeth aren't anywhere near the stage of needing crowns. So I'm not doing that just to appease rude people online. But then another thing that I had to deal with this year that was kind of really hard for me is that when you have a business and or especially if you're on social media and you're but if you're putting like literally yourself out there not just your products in your videos and photos you get comments about your appearance and with my Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome something that I struggle with is um, kind of like my body type and something that kind of gets really frustrating for me to deal with is I have had a larger number of people this year comment on my weight and it's kind of like a hard thing to talk about because I feel like some people don't understand that being really thin you also get jabs and you get made fun of for being too thin and 
I don't think people fully realize that just because you're really thin, it doesn't mean that person wants to be that thin. Like I am someone, for example, I don't like how thin I am, but it's not something I can help. And I've gotten a lot of comments um, really on almost all social media platforms about how like you like are you eating it looks like you've lost weight or you need to put some weight on or like are you okay you don't look well and those comments like onesie twosies are fine but when it's constant it's very very difficult to deal with um because it's already something i'm self-conscious about so when when I then realize other people are noticing it, it makes me kind of want to like be a turtle and kind of like go in my shell and not share myself. Like I am someone that I have always been slightly underweight. No matter what I do, I can't help it. Like yes, I have a fast metabolism, but it's also the fact that with my Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I have so many gastrointestinal problems. I have, um, they're thinking a bit of gastroparesis and then I also just have a hard time my body doesn't absorb nutrients well or at all really no matter like no matter how many nutrients i eat my vitamin levels are always low and i don't have a lot of muscle mass or any really and i'm just someone that i have a hard time eating because i feel so sick when i eat and i get a lot of physical pain in my gut when i eat and i'm as i've gotten older with my haler stanlos um it's really screwed up my intestines and just the whole digestive tract. Honestly, the joke now with my family is that like every year, my what I can eat gets smaller and smaller because I keep developing um, intolerances and allergies to foods that I never had before. And it's very frustrating to deal with. I had to cut out all gluten and all dairy. Um, I think it's been two, two years now that I've been without it full time. Uh, I would get so sick. I would end up in the hospital from being so sick from eating just just bread. <laughs> That's how bad it would get. And um, and then we figured out I was still getting sick and then I found out it was dairy causing it. Had to cut that out. It's been fish. It's been shellfish. It's been foods with like histamine. It's been fruits. It's been sugars. Sugar makes me get headaches and I get inflamed and it's, I have a hard time eating. So I'm someone that I am slightly underweight. Um, and just the constant comments, I mean, just in general, the constant comments this year about my appearance has been very hard, but in 2024, I am just going to really work on kind of like making my skin a bit thicker and really building that thick skin more than it already is <laughs> and just um turning a blind eye to it and just saying like thank you for your concern but i'm fine and because i mean it's hard because some people are coming from a place of concern which those comments i fully um appreciate but it's comments that are like the meanness i don't appreciate but because like Yes, even though like I'm here showing you like what my life is like and what goes on behind the scenes with my small business, you're not seeing the bad parts. Like, yeah, you might be seeing like the stressful and frustrating parts that go on with like running the business side, but you're not seeing the parts where I'm going to physical therapy and getting my ribs pushed back into place and being in excruciating pain or having to take medication because because my body just decided to get really inflamed and me being in pain and the medication makes me dizzy and sick and being up in the middle of the night having to eat ginger candy or ginger tea because I feel so sick and the chronic pain and having to when I'm drawing either having to wear my wrist brace or having um, having to take ibuprofen before drawing or putting on my like neck um, pillow to like keep my neck supported while I draw and just all like the hard physical stuff people don't see that or like all the electrolytes I have to drink just to keep my blood pressure from not dropping too low and I always say that running my business and keeping my body going are like two full-time jobs because having a chronic illness is not easy and when you combine that with running a business like your own business full-time by yourself very uh, challenging to say the least so I don't have like the mental capacity to deal with negativity from people so I'm really gonna try next year just to really block it out 
and just only focus on positive positive people and positive things but then that was a long thing but the next thing that I wanted to talk about that the hardest lesson I had to learn this year was and this kind of goes along well it does go along with my Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is that I am a very highly motivated person with big dreams living in a very limited unmotivated body <laughs> So I feel like all my fellow chronic illness spoonies out there can re relate to this. But I have such big dreams. I have such big hopes. I'm someone where I don't like to just sit and watch TV. I get bored. I want to just do things. I just want to like do, 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 and be drawing something, be making something, be working. And I love working. I It's my passion. It keeps me going. That's literally what I live for. I love it. But I do not live in a body that likes... To function well pretty much and like I could just not work all day and I feel exhausted and I feel so tired and I need a nap and I feel achy I feel in pain and so when you add how you feel every day with a chronic illness onto working as much as you do in the body that you're in um, it's heartbreaking really it's I mean and I have good like today's a really good day I feel good today but some days I don't feel well like I really don't feel well I'll just be sleeping for hours in the afternoon not doing much in a lot of pain really sick to my stomach or like really dizzy or having a lot of headaches and really brain fog and it just it's like every day is a roulette wheel and I never know how I'm gonna feel when I wake up it's been a very hard um, kind of like thing to come to terms with over the past few years but I feel like I have for the most part I've been noticing that I've kind of like been doing the, com the comparison game which they always say don't do and I'm always like oh don't do that but it's hard not to do it because it's very easy in the world of social media to just compare yourself to people and see how much at least for me I compare myself energy wise like I'm someone that I am so supportive of other small business owners I love buying from other small businesses I love cheering them on rooting for them and I love seeing them successful what I get kind of sad about and compare myself with is how much energy they have because it might look like I have a lot of energy from all that I do in my videos, but I don't. I really don't. And I get very envious of seeing other business owners that can just push themselves and like do so much in a day and then feel fine and um, can get up and do it again the next day and not feel awful. Because if I push myself, I will get up the next day and I will be down for the count for like five days or I will just feel in so much pain and exhausted and I'm trying for going into 2024 to stop comparing myself or at least try to not do it as much and realize that everybody is different. Everybody has different body types and what they're able to do and I'm trying to come to terms and I've been seeing my therapist for this to help me with it but I've been trying to come to terms with the fact that I can't do as much as other people can and I just have to be okay with that and thank my body and love my body for what it is able to do because it is able to do a pretty good amount of stuff given what I deal with every day so I'm very thankful for that but it's just I get hard on myself I think because something that I deal with not a lot a lot but frequently at least after big launches is constant messages of like why hasn't this shipped yet why are you so slow when is this going to ship are you ever going to ship it and like i fully understand like buying something and be like oh i just want it now and getting excited and i wish i could get things out that quickly for people but at the end of the day i'm just having to come to terms with the fact that i can only do what i'm able to do and i'm i can't be superwoman and ship 400 orders from a launch day out in a day let alone five like it takes so much time and it's so much work that a lot of people don't I think realize what goes into doing these things and that when they place an order sure it might be like three bookmarks but if you're behind 900 other orders that's 900 other orders that I have to pack before I get to those three bookmarks so it's I just kind of struggle with that because when I constantly get those messages I feel really bad about myself and I'm like, you're not doing enough, you need to work harder. And I'll actually like force myself to work longer and I'll end up like maybe missing lunch or missing dinner. 
and missing several hours of sleep just to make people happy to get it shipped a day earlier or two days earlier and I can't do that all the time like I like I can't keep doing that and it's that's been a hard lesson I've had to learn this year is that I can't I don't know how to word this I can't forego taking care of myself and putting my health first over shipping orders because if I don't take care of myself there's no one to do it <laughs> so the only other thing I can do is hire part-time help to help pack orders but the problem with that is because of my Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is I get infections very easily which is why if you see pictures of me or videos of me when I'm like out and about my face is covered because I get infections very easily and I have to be very very careful about being around other people um, and germs and stuff and when I get infections I get them for like twice or three times as long as someone normally would and I get hit very harder from it so that's something that's it's hard for me to even to think about how I could have someone help me pack orders because I can't have someone in here in the studio helping me and then I would constantly be worried about am I gonna get sick any day now and I, I don't want to have that mindset that's just not fun so if I did hire help it would need to be maybe someone that could like come pick up things and they could take it home and do some things maybe like prep work like packing ornaments or putting stickers on notepads or like for when I'm doing my subscription boxes they could like bag all the notepads or something and that could be super super helpful but I just I can't have someone in the studio that I'm not that I don't live with just because of the whole infection thing so that makes it harder because that's another thing I get envious about is seeing other small business owners and they're like oh I just hired someone I just have someone helping pack orders and I get sad that I can't do that and I'm always having people ask me like well why can't you just hire someone like just hire someone to help and it's hard to explain that I can't it's not as easy for someone with a chronic illness because you have to be very careful about who you're near and germs and contaminants and all that stuff. So it's hard. Um, it's been a very, very hard lesson to learn this year about what my limitations are. And just based off of how hard I worked the past few months, I can't do that again next year. Um, so it would really have to be me just kind of like spreading out more and like, giving myself grace and allowing myself kind of to just slow down so yeah i gotta figure that out but i mean the first part of the year usually like january through september things are no like august things are kind of not slow but they're not crazy like september through december when it's like so many launches and so many orders coming in so it's more manageable but um i have been talking with my mom about um hiring her part-time to help pack orders during when I'm having like really busy times like with launches and stuff like that to get orders out faster so um, that is my goal one of my goals for 2024 is to hopefully figure something out so figure something else out to have um, her or yeah it really only kind of I guess be her I have to help me so my stepdad works my, my fiance works so I can't really have anybody else help me that lives here so there's that. But now I want to switch gears a little bit and I want to talk about the things that I want to change about my business in 2024. Because I do have some things that I want to change that I think could help maybe like make it grow or help things kind of go a bit more smoothly or make me happier. So the first thing that I want to work on is I want to start designing collections earlier than I normally do and sit I'm looking at my phone because I have all things written down that I my talking points that I wanted to go over but and I want to set like dates for exactly when I want to like start designing have the launch go up buy the products and I already do that kind of loosely but I feel like I need to be more strict about it and I even bought myself a new planner. I'm someone, I don't, is anybody else like this? You buy a planner with all the best intentions of using it. You'll use it for like a month or two and then it's like, nope. You ever do that? Yeah, okay. I'm worried that's what's gonna happen to me again because I do that all the time, but I bought a planner. Hopefully it works this year and it sticks, but I want to start designing my collections probably a good few weeks earlier than I normally would. Like I'm talking like designing fall, in July and designing Halloween in August and designing Christmas in September and 
I'm already behind for if I'm gonna do like a Valentine's thing or romance thing because that would have that would have been great to do in November but, but I was so late with designing things this year that I got so stressed out and I don't want to do that again next year I want to design things much earlier and then I can buy the products much earlier and then I can make sure all the quality checks are good have time to get replacement set if anything like gets printed incorrectly and get the photo shoot done a good I think like two weeks in advance to give myself time to edit the photos edit the reels put the content together and then do the week of sharing like the product reveals and stuff like that I think that'll help me out <laughs> And then another change that I want to make next year is I want to design more everyday collections. So I, you probably noticed, I design a lot of like seasonal collections and I've loved doing that. Don't get me wrong, I'm still going to do like fall, Halloween, and Christmas. Those are going to be like my big seasonal launches every year. But like the other parts of the year, I really want to not feel like I have to hold myself to just designing based on what season we're in. Like I don't think I want to do a summer launch next year. I just want to do maybe like shop updates with like everyday bookish artwork that you can use like all year round. And yeah, that's something that I want to do next year. Like I'd like to do shop updates where it's like miscellaneous stuff, but I do notice I have more fun and more of kind of like motivation to do launches when there is a set theme so like a late night theme or a botanical theme so i think i'll still do like a set theme like that but it would just be like everyday themes that you could use all year round and not just for a certain season okay so another one this is a big one a big change i want to make next year is i want to set work hours for myself and specifically with setting work hours for answering emails and messages for customer service because I pretty much have myself available 24 seven and I don't, I can't function like that anymore cause I feel like I'm spreading myself too thin. I'll answer people at 10 PM or if I'm up at 1 AM and I see it, I'll answer it. And I wanna be really good about setting times for myself to be like, I'll answer it between this time. If it's after this time, I'll look at it the next day or something. And I've been trying to figure out if I wanna keep the chat window on my website active because I'm kind of getting a bit overwhelmed because I'm kind of getting like not bombarded but I'm getting customer service like messages on almost too many different places and it's stressing me out on Etsy I get them on Etsy messages and so it's perfectly organized I know where to see them and I can go and check them Shopify I have a contact form get that to my email I can answer them but what I get stressed out with is people will send me comments or messages on social media being like, did my order ship? And I get, it's kind of hard to deal with as a small business owner because just with someone commenting, I don't know what your order number is. I don't know what you ordered or what platform you ordered on. So it's really stressful for a business owner to have to do order inquiries on social media because it's like you wouldn't comment on targets like Target or Starbucks or whatever. I don't know, not Starbucks, that's a bad example. Amazon on their like Instagram, most recent Instagram posts and be like, hey, when's my order shipping? They're not gonna know, they're not gonna help you. I kind of struggle with that because as a small business owner, I think people kind of think that you're able to just message them on any social media platform and they're able to just help you right then and there. And um, what I started doing this year and I'm gonna do it next year again, and maybe I just have to put it in my bio, is whenever I get like messages or comments like that, I like I have to just, just say like, please send all order related questions to this email and I will get back to you in like, 24 to 48 business hours or something because I'll get especially during this busy season I'll get order questions in comments on Instagram on my direct messages in reply to a story I post about Toby I will get it on um, TikTok messages I will get it on Facebook messenger on Facebook comments I'll have people directly email me and sometimes the emails don't go through and they think I'm ignoring them and I'm not so I think I just have to really kind of make like a post or something put it in my bio or something and say if you have order questions please send it here because it's just it gets i mean because instagram messages they get lost comments get lost social media messages they get lost so it makes it so much easier for me if it's organized and what i've been running into with the shopify like chat feature is that 
I'm just having a hard time keeping up with it because I don't, sometimes I'll get notifications from it, but if I don't see it, like on my phone, I can easily miss it and then I don't see it for a few days and I don't like to keep people waiting. So I don't know whether I want to disable it this year or what. Or maybe I can ask my virtual assistant to do that part, to keep up with it. Maybe I'll do that. Um, Cause I mean, it is a nice feature to have. So I have to figure out something about customer service cause it's just customer service emails. I just get very overwhelmed sometimes with trying to answer them all. Yeah, so I have to figure that out next year. <laughs> and then finally, one of the ultimate biggest changes that I wanna make in my business next year, um, which I actually did today is I have quit TikTok shop. I'm not a fan of it. Um, I was very hopeful for it in the beginning. I was like, this is gonna be great. It's another selling platform. I'm already on TikTok. This would be awesome to be able to link my products. But um, I honestly have really been struggling with wanting to do it the past few months. And um, I'll tell you why. Um, I mean, for some people it works really well and it's a great platform, but for me, I just found it just does not work for me. Like for example, you have to set a processing time and usually my processing time is five to seven business days. During my busy season, it's it could be like 10 to 13. And on TikTok shop, you have to set your processing time and you only have the option to choose between one day, two day, or three day. Three days is crazy when you're a shop that has 800, 900 plus orders at a time. That's crazy. I mean, I can't, I can't do that. So I was really working myself ragged trying to fulfill TikTok shop orders in such a short processing time. And one of the other things I don't like about that is I kind of felt like things were being held over my head because if you didn't do things right, they would send you an email saying you have a strike against your shop, you have a violation. And it made you feel almost like, just like dirt and like you did something wrong when in the real world, that's not doing anything wrong. And it was like, for example, something I ran into was that even if you shipped it on time, if the post office didn't scan it by a certain like exact time, TikTok shop would give you a violation and it would say, you shipped it late, you have a ding against your, you have a strike against your shop. And they would um, message the customer and give them the option to cancel the order and get fully refunded even though you already shipped it. And I would constantly have to be on chat support with TikTok shop. I would have to be messaging my postmaster being like, can we get this scanned? Cause I would give them a package and sometimes they didn't scan it for like four or five days, but it was already gone many states away. But TikTok shop would take it out on me and I would get in trouble for it not being scanned, even though I shipped it on time. So that was frustrating. And I didn't, I just didn't like that constantly being held over my head. That was just really <laughs> um, stressful to deal with. And then another thing that I had come up recently was that I was buying shipping labels for orders that had to ship in two days because I was going away on the trip up to Maine and I bought the labels and it was like, oh, your shipping labels are processing. Um, they'll be ready to print in 26 hours. I was like, what? I've never in all my like 11, 12 years of selling online had a, sh had a platform say it takes 26 hours to print a shipping label. And so I was obviously leaving the next day and I messaged TikTok shop. I'm like, I'm not gonna be here to print this in 26 hours. I have to print it now or else I won't be able to ship it for like three more days. And it has to ship by this date, according to them. And I messaged them, I'm like, since, you're, since I bought the label on time and the order's ready and the order's ready to ship, but your platform is telling me you won't have the label ready for 26 hours, will I still get a violation strike if it doesn't ship by this date? And they're like, yeah, you would get a strike against your shop, even though it was their fault. And I'm like, what? So that was frustrating. And I, en I ended up having to cancel the customer's orders because I was gonna get all these strikes against my shop. So I had to cancel it. And it's, it's just frustrating. And it was, in my opinion, it was more 
it was more stressful than it was worth really and another thing you couldn't do is like in all my outgoing orders like Shopify and Etsy you get um, like a thank you postcard that I write like your name on to make it personable and they told me that if I included that my shop, my shop would get a strike for promoting my own shop it was just weird I just felt very kind of like caged in and like I was in this glass box that I was kind of being watched and that you're not allowed to promote your shop yet you're shipping your shop items but you can't talk about your shop and it was just I don't know it was a weird vibe I didn't like it at all really so I quit it today and yeah um and I feel so much relief I feel really happy not having to do that anymore so um I'm just gonna stick with my shop on Shopify, Etsy, and Wholesale. <laughs> and the other thing that I want to do this year is I want to focus on really uh, making self-care a priority because I work so hard and I feel like every small business owner needs to do this but I just need to take better care of myself. And so something that I did, I got myself a little Christmas present. This is my emotional support penguin. His name is Puff the Penguin. And um, he is full of lavender and um, he's this little warmable guy that you can put him in the microwave and then he's weighted so it's like a anxiety soother too and what I'm gonna do is just in the evenings I'm gonna heat him up and just like cuddle with him and just read a book and just chill out and be calm so this is my little emotional support penguin and I love him very much it's the newest member of the family <laughs> Okay, so we are almost to the end of this video, but last thing I want to talk about is new product goals that I have for 2024. So some of the new products that I want to do next year are I want to I want to start making steps towards doing that coffee table book that I talked about in my Q&A for the first day of Vlogmas. So I mentioned this in the video, but I want to do a coffee table book where it's just all of my artwork, but then next to each artwork I have different passages like talking about my inspiration or talking about the scene that I made and just really making it immersive and it's like bringing you into my mind and seeing the thought process that goes into making the art because like on the outside you see the artwork and you're like oh that's cute hopefully you think that but you don't really see like the thoughts and like the design process so I kind of want it to have it be like a book where you're like taking a step into my mind and seeing what it's like in my mind where I come up with all these like whimsical scenes and colorful happy art and I just I really want to make that like a coffee table book so that's going to be a goal I don't know necessarily it's something I would finish next year but it's something I definitely want to take steps towards starting um, and planning out. And then another thing that I want to do is I want to do another bookish coloring book. So I did one, oh man, what was it, two years? It was it two years? Two years ago now? Um, so I want to do another one because I have so much more artwork that I want to do line art versions of to make so you can color it. So I'm going to be doing another coloring book. So that's going to be in the works. And then another thing book wise is I'm going to be doing a new updated version of my book lovers planner that I designed three or four years ago now. I think it was three. I don't know I think three but it's been a long time coming for me to update that so I'm gonna be doing a brand new updated version and then another new thing it's not really like a new product but a new service I guess if you will is um, I do want to take steps towards starting um, to do some small business coaching so that is something that a lot of you guys have been asking for and um, I asked again in the vlogmas video, is that something you'd be interested in? And you guys said yes. I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be doing a poll actually on my Instagram. I don't know if it's gonna be before this video goes up or after, but if you don't see it, feel free to comment below. But I'm gonna be asking you guys um, what type of small business coaching you'd like. So let me know below is would you want it to be like a face-to-face -face live Zoom call? Would you want it to be um, just a phone call where we don't see each other but we're just on the phone? Or would you want it to be you send me all your questions and I record a video like this, like a pre-recorded video of me talking to the camera and then you have that saved to look back on over and over again anytime you have questions like, what did she say? Did she say this? And I can go over it in detail um, to help. So let me know which of those three options you'd like best. 
I'm thinking I to start I would only offer one. So let me know which um, version of coaching would you feel would be best helpful for you guys and I can work on putting that together. But overall, my biggest goal for 2024 is going to be, like I said, prioritizing self-care, making the most happiest possible artwork that I can, and I also want to put a lot more energy into my YouTube channel. Even though that sounds crazy because I already am because I do weekly videos, but what I mean by that is I want to keep putting all this energy into doing weekly videos and replying to all the comments because that is a goal of mine is any comment I get on my videos, I just want to reply to all of them. I'm a bit behind from Vlogmas because the videos were posted so close together that I had a hard time keeping up with all the comments, but I want to reply to all the comments. I just love, I love this community that we have built together. I am so immensely grateful for it. I cannot even begin to tell you ever since having this youtube channel i have felt like that final puzzle piece has just like slid into place i'm just like i just feel so fulfilled and i love it here i love you guys i love hanging out with you you guys are the absolute best you're amazing i love making these videos for you and i'm so happy that you enjoy them too and it's just I have so much fun making these. Like, yes, it's a lot of work, but I it's work that I really enjoy doing and I just feel so fulfilled and I have so much fun. And I look forward to filming these videos and editing them and putting them out there for you guys. So I'm glad you enjoy them. But I just wanna end this video by thanking you guys so, so much for making 2023 such an amazing year. It has by far been the most pivotal year for my business. Every social media channel grew. All my sales channels grew. I am blown away. It's the year I really felt like I just really like nailed down my art style, like my happy, colorful, whimsical style. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just go to the beat of our own drum and just be uniquely us. And that's what my goal is. And I'm just, I'm so happy to have you guys on this journey with me. Starting this YouTube channel in, what was it, March or April of this year was the best thing I ever did. And I'm so happy to have you guys here. And um, you have truly, truly, the whole YouTube community has been a very bright spot in my year. And I'm just so excited for next year and what's to come and all the videos we're going to be making and all of the new artwork I'm going to be creating. I'm currently designing for the January Emily Cromwell Designs box and that is going to be going up very very soon and I just I can't I can't wait to just see what this year has to offer. I have a very good feeling. I have a very very good feeling that this is going to be a big year. Big things are going to happen and it's just going to be I I feel like dare I say a life-changing year. That's what I'm feeling. I feel like it's going to be a very positive life-changing year. So on that note, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and all of this year because this is the last video before the new year. So this is the last video for 2023. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for watching this video. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you. Every single like, comment and subscribe you guys do i appreciate it from the bottom of my heart i'm so grateful and i hope you guys have been having a wonderful and magical holiday season if you celebrate christmas i hope you had a very merry christmas and i hope you guys of course are reading some amazing books on your holiday break and i will see you guys in my next video bye, bye.